big topic. You want to know something so funny about the uh, what would you rather when we talked about being invincible or being able to fly? <laughs> it was so funny because so Paul and I were talking yeah. and he's like, that's the weirdest thing ever. If you're invisible, you don't go through walls. You just, people don't see you. And I'm like, we argued. <laughs> Not argued, but you know what I mean? It was hilarious. Well, it's true. It's like, it's like Harry Potter has the cloak of visibility. Can you go through walls? No. Oh. He just would be around and listen to all the songs. But the so, songs, the stories. So you're invisible. You're invisible. And you can't go through walls. Well, you can't. Like objects. I kind of agree with Paul. <laughs> you, you guys have zero imagination. Um, I have the best imagination. You're a doomer. If you want to go. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're a doomer. If I'm going to be invisible, I have to go through things. Well, <laughs> the wall, that, makes you, a go go that makes you a ghost. Yeah, well, that's how I attribute being invisible. Mm. No? Yeah. Did I say, I, I can't remember. I, I think I said I wanted to fly. You said to fly, no? Uh, Oh, invisible. invisible. Can you so imagine all you those conversations you would hear? Whoop. I don't even know if I'd want to no. hear that kind of stuff. To be no. it's just not that was a fun it. one, actually. Yeah. Um. All right, so that's. Uh, I think we're good. Boom, 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 boom. Boop. Ooh. Ah. Wow, that looks like I'm a going dance. To the spa move. this week. Oh. <laughs> Which spa? We went to Sanctuary. Where is that? Um, I Well, they have a few locations, like mm. Burlington, Woodbridge, New Market, I think Oakville. Mm. Very nice. I think they have four locations, but yeah, I booked a massage, a facial, Oof. a body scrub, Oof. a body treatment. The works. Yeah. It's a full day? No, I have to work. I have to work in the morning. Uh-huh. And then I go, and then I have to go back to work. I know that kind of sucks, but what? oh, that's a weird, a weird mix. way to schedule yeah. it. I know it's like parent life. Are we uh, ready to roll? All good. Are we ready, Uncle? All good. <laughs> All good. So shall we? Oh, cheers! Thanks for grabbing this no today. No problem. Cheers. This one goes back easier. She's Candace. It is better. Ooh, disgusting. Candice. Candice is a pretty sounding name. Candace. I'm, I'm used to that. Trying, but it is way oh, better. It so is much, better. Candace. It is much better. There's a different. Yeah, yeah. So, Christina, I'm sorry right? about that. Taste Mental it. Yeah. characteristics. Still burning. Somebody with the name of Christina yeah. experiences. K R I S T I N A Christina. Yeah, that was fun. I would do that. Because others are like Christina. Yeah. You're Brett. I know. I'm yes, more. you did. So, yes, you did. Well, yes, you the did. one that Brett said, they had the modern brown Mathers and podcast white. With I was going to get the white one, Christina but I didn't know. And Brett. The darker the two. It's better? Okay. Is that true? Good Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I find that. Okay. It's okay. good to know. All right, guys. Hello. Oh, I still... Hello. Hello. Oh, tequila is still going down. All right. Welcome. Welcome back to Modern Matters Podcast. Hey, hey. Wasn't that sultry? Hey, Brett. Hi. And Christina. Hey. And me, Candace. All right. Today we're going to talk forced obsolescence. This is a trigger. It's a trigger word. Yeah. Oh, I think gonna, some people gonna are going to have it. a lot to say. Oh. You're, just, one You're just an ordinary guy who lives an ordinary <laughs> life. Wow. <laughs> Got two normal so inspiring. Sort of and I love kind it. Of There's a lot I like wife. about what's happening. Yes. Kind of average so life. So when it's time to start your ordinary day. Oh, just your God. ordinary day. You need a great a big, big bowl of special ordinary cake. cake. Ordinary cake. Oh. Ordinary. Oh. <laughs> Copyright. Ordinary what? Trademark. Oh. Oh, oh dear. Wow. So what inspiring. era do you think this is from? 70s? Early 90s. No. 90s earlier. Come on. It, they're trying to portray the 90s there? Yeah. I think it was a, it's a sketch comedy yeah. show from the UK, I believe. I didn't, mm. I didn't do much uh, research into the back end, but it looked like early 90s kind of... 
yeah. that, that type that of vibe, humor. Yeah. 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 So I like that you went with the ordinary special K on this day. Hey, nowhere did it say special K. Oh. Ordinary oh, K. Sorry, we just jumped in. Trademark. It, that guy remind me of Dilbert. Remember, remember the cartoon the, Dilbert? I was gonna yeah, say, he's the cartoon. in a, yeah, he's in hot water now. That artist. Oh, Uh-oh. really? Why? It's gotten a little political. It's getting, Ooh, getting really? Yeah. Oh, now I'm curious. He's trying. They're trying to force him to be obsolete. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. They are. Uh, he's really. He's he's uh, vocalizing his opinions outside of the cartoon, oh. and then I think it's leaked into the cartoon oh. as well. So. Oh, that's interesting to know. Mm-hmm. Hmm. You gotta be careful these days. You gotta be careful of everything. Yeah. Yep. Anyhow, mm-hmm. uh, before we jump into today's topic, anybody have any circle backs from previous episodes that you want to touch on? No. Or we roll in. I have something for Christina. Oh. <laughs> the I love you. this isn't a viral video classic. Oh. You just mentioned in the uh, probably the pet peeves I think episode. Yeah. Uh, people, people too close. People too close drives me crazy. How do you feel about this? What? Oh. Oh, I love that girl. This oh. combines two of my favorite things. Oh. Are you unaware jo- selfie I think, taking? I think I would lose it. At this point, I would say something. I'd be this like, really? Like, so how rude are you? Look at she's her. She's laughing though because she's like, this is weird. Yeah. Are you joking? Why would you do that? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I wanted, uh, at is first I thought, that's what I thought. Maybe it's fake. But it has been making the rounds. I've seen it across multiple different accounts that I follow. And I'm like, this seems pretty... I don't know. Pretty unaware. Where is your etiquette? Like, and it makes you think about when you take a selfie, what are you really seeing? (laughs) Only this. I I smile. Meanwhile, you're Miss Rudy and in someone's meal. That's why I love the account uh, in... um, influencers in the wild oh, because it's all true. that it's just nonsense it okay. feels just, that yeah okay. see my big complaint often and i've said this in other episodes that we've recorded is the lack of spatial awareness i often get upset with my children about it like walking by something in the house you see you've, there's a loose sock it's there don't yeah ignore it. don't ignore it yeah it's a weird one anyways i, um, I actually want to say something to yeah. you yeah, yeah, yeah i was at walmart um, up oh. north and I had my cart and I put it beside I really was thinking I should put it away because <laughs> this is Candace's pet peeve One and a woman came and she grabbed it and she gave me the snubbed look like disgusted like she was like oh can't believe she wouldn't have taken her cart I was like oh my god I gotta get in my jeep and I gotta go because Candace, she's not alone. There's other people that get really bugged sure. by that. That's true. Well, especially at a northern Walmart. Oh yeah, you don't in fuck north, about up yeah, there in the north. Who knows, guys? Anywhere. Coo, 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 coo. I I really liked I really liked our pet peeve episode. It it got some feedback from family and friends for me. So, um, the shopping cart one. Yeah, was, you know. Yeah, I I just it's a real thing that I saw it happen this weekend. We haven't recorded in a while, and I wanted to fit this in uh, in April when it came out, but I couldn't get it in there, and now the weather's changed, so it seems like I'm too delayed, but did you guys see this in Newfoundland towards the end of April? (laughs) It definitely looks like what people are saying, almost a little bit too graphic. Yeah. I've personally never seen anything like it. From the right angle, it appears to uh, replicate certain body parts mm-hmm. from a male. I was really happy to see it, of course, but clearly it was a lot more happy to see me. Despite how cold it is, it's going strong. <laughs> and the dad jokes 10, began. Year old, and here uh, comes the dad That jokes. one got you. Yeah, well, that that was, was a genuine yeah, laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh. There's a lot more below the water. There's a few people that are saying it should be the new mascot for Dildo Newfoundland. <laughs> <laughs> if it had ended up being Dildo, so that's so funny. Our like RMT at the clinic is from Dildo broken. Newfoundland. <laughs> well, there you that's go. A that is a place in Newfoundland. You don't see so that every day. It's going for probably about a week. But it that's looks good. like it's like 50 Is it gone now? Yeah, so it only lasted uh, a short it's while. It's the highlight of the season so far. Well, they usually do. <laughs> it crumbled. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now that's a dad joke that got me. Uh, yeah. This well, is not real. That, that was real. <laughs> that I know. Was it was very real. real. Um, okay. So, Brett, I'm going to throw you like right right under the bus for this yeah, one because this is you yours. were okay. heated Always about on this, topic. Uh, this topic of 
forced obsolescence. Mm-hmm. You ready? Oh, you ready, ready for this? Let's okay. see if I know. I feel like it's a zombie. Oh. I think I love this. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're letting it know. <laughs> this is the first ever repeat uh, music. Oh. Uh. Christina, you asked for it and you got it. It's is Tasha. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. I like yeah. that. Is no. Tasha no, not going to lie? Is yeah. Tasha uh, obsolete? That's called obsolete. Yes. Oh, That's well, like so good fitting. driving music for um, me when people are in the passing lane. Yeah, when they're, they're, when anyways, they're road <laughs> raging. I don't want to go too far back. So for anyone that... It's like Rob is, Zombie. It's like... <laughs> It's East, it's East... It's East, dark. It's Tasha. It's Tasha. It's I Tasha. I can't even say No, it. thank you. It's Tasha. Sure. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. I liked it. So, so just to briefly touch on mm. on today's topic and what it actually means because i know when we first talked about it i know you christina were a yeah, little bit I'm like what clueless what are we going? didn't know no you weren't clueless i i can understand it so when when this came up for anyone tuning in audio or video brett works in an industry where tech is massively a, a dominant part of your field of work mm-hmm. being in photography videography graphic design and I have often seen triggered moments oh, where me too. something no longer... Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. I feel bad um, for him when it happens. <laughs> where things no longer work. So for anyone um, watching, it's when your phone has done so many updates that it no longer works. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of tech companies are doing things like this where they need updates, updates, and then these things no longer work, which is the topic of four stops lessons. I wanted to give some, some context, some definition to what, what mm-hmm. we're talking about here. Apple products. Um, Do you think that happens Apple, with them? Apple is certainly a big one. Uh-huh. And, uh, and to be clear, it doesn't usually affect the functionality of the product mm-hmm. while you're using it. And Apple really has a stronghold. I think everybody has their own opinions on, on what they need yeah. f- for tools for their work but i mean the user experience of apple outside of the the forced obsolescence or the now maybe planned obsolescence so there's really three uh that i have experienced all of but to kind of define them separately there's planned obsolescence Uh which is the company is making things to break right so it's not nice you hear a lot of that with like uh hardware stuff uh kitchen appliances Mm. that type of stuff i had a problem with my uh, dishwasher that the the hinge to flip the door open broke or something and i needed the hinge i had to buy the whole 99 dollar door just to get the hinge oh wow and it broke twice so it just it continually breaks it's the hinge i tried to find the hinge i couldn't get it on its own so that's the planned obsolescence part the forced obsolescence is what I'm running into with my Apple products because I'm stubborn as a mule and I try to keep them as long as I can. And they really should work as long as the heartbeat, let's say in the, the laptop ticks, the hard drive spins, there's power to it, the screen isn't broken. It really should work. It's when it's a software problem from their end that forces the obsolescence of the machine, but mm. it literally plugs in, it literally works. It just, you can't use it because of the software that's forced obsolescence which drives me the most crazy and then there's just perceived obsolescence which i think of more with maybe your kids uh, or people who just go through phones or have something where it's not necessarily broken it's just perceived to be out of date it doesn't really Mm. seem to fit the bill even though it completely does it's it's again it's a the heartbeat of the the device still works it's just i need a new one because everyone else has a new one that's so. kids for sure yeah. yeah yeah i think we can pair it slightly also with the world today being for example you see vehicles you used to see a car someone would buy a car and they would have that car for 10 15 20 years mm-hmm. Nowadays, you you often don't see that. People have a car mm-hmm. for five years and then they're switching out into mm-hmm. something new. Um, and it's it's for the need of looking up to date and thinking it's out of date, but it's also because they don't really make things the way they used to. So we could kind of pair it with the quality of production in the modern world. There's just so much production happening. Do you think it's manipulative of course. Oh, it's 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 certainly because uh, I think it's shady business. I don't absolutely. like it. I don't like that at all. Because the consumer just buys. Like me, I am like so naive. I buy. I'm like, hey, oh my god, this is gonna work. I'm so happy. And then to have something that I have to replace within a year, that 
no one has communicated that that's a part of that process or that it's planned, as you said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I find that tons of that very disappointing. Well, in history, they've they've discovered that uh, in the like the tinfoil hat world, the conspiracy world, but it has been proven to be true. <laughs> the um, there was something in in the er, in the mid twenties, like yeah, that's me, yeah, nineteen twenty five ish, I think it was in Geneva an oligopoly of um, light bulb makers, right? Including Philips and General Electric and basically everybody that produced light bulbs in and around this like kind of new time where we came from candles and I mean, that's how you had to see. And then we have the light bulb, we have the filament, all that stuff. It's kind of a miracle. They started to realize, hey, these are lasting too long. We're getting Mm. like 2000 hours out of these bulbs. They don't need to be replaced. So this oligopoly of of companies came together and they called themselves the Phoebus cartel in Geneva. And they basically said, here's the standard that we need to to produce these light bulbs in. And you would think standard typically is, oh, it has to to fit this certain threshold in order to have quality control. But it was, they cannot go over a thousand hours. People need to be buying new ones and replacing them and... And they, I think they plan to do that for like 30 years and mm-hmm. kind of test it and see, play puppet master and see how that yeah. would work. And it was World War II, I think, that that diminished it, that kind yeah. of uh, got rid of that Phoebus cartel. But that was in the conspiracy world. That's the, the big one that everybody points to where that's kind of the beginning of it, where, oh, this mindset of things need to be made to be broken because you can't you keep stuff You have to make forever. money. Right. So, oh, it's so bad. You're, I'm glad you kind of brought touch on that because yesterday Brett posted a video about the pollution in the ocean and I made a snarky comment about bring back the plastic straws. <laughs> it was a joke. It was my sarcasm. However... <laughs> Elaborate, um, please. Yeah, explain. <laughs> well, because the oceans are filled with tons of plastic, and it, it pointed out to say that you could line up, I forget the... One million standard size SUVs end-to-end. End-to-end is the amount worth of, of plastic. garbage. Oh. In Cumulatively. Plastic. Uh. Accumulative. Now, to to that video that I saw, and to my point about bring back the straws, and I was being like yeah. kind of a, a jerk, is that... Funny. The people that are a cause of a lot of this waste and pollution are the biggest businesses in the world, Mm -hmm. the biggest industries in the world. They, it should be, in my opinion, almost illegal to make hard product, like a, like a tangible product so terribly that it doesn't last a cell phone, a Mm -hmm. microphone, a computer. Like why is it that they're allowed to have such a, short lifespan vehicles it's capitalism at at its finest Mm -hmm. right so it's i agree i agree but anybody who owns a business is going to go well how do we make money right why would we make it sustainable that doesn't make any sense and that that's the part where i think that there's some shadiness around it um because the consumer out of yeah the consumer is straws yeah I had to do that. I'm sorry. It drives me nuts. Wait, but does it work? No. Do you feel like a better no. person because you're drinking out of a no. paper straw? No. Right? My glove compartment is filled with plastic straws. Yeah. Okay. Well, but but <laughs> but there is definitely. Um, I, I think I'm the just thinking these poor turtles. That's yeah. It. The turtles. <laughs> Come on, Christina. No, the, the turtles, turtles are affected but, by the consumerism that you spoke on, and I agree. Well, and it's funny. I think that the other part of it too is that you there. It's a slippery slope because then there's dependency, right? So you get so caught up, and that's the way it's been set up that we become very dependent on these things, and we almost become lazy, um, and we expect these things to flow and things to be easy and all that stuff that we forget. And then we're very dependent and then we're stuck in a position yeah. where you have to buy it, right? Mm-hmm. So if you have a new system, yeah. you spend all this money and then they upgrade or they change it, mm-hmm. then what are you going to do? You, have, gonna, to have, it, you right. have to have it. Like yeah. you can't throw the computer out. Yeah. You just invested like two grand on that, mm-hmm. right? I, I have in full operation two computers and one I keep completely up to date and the other one I've had since 2012 and I... I stopped updating it in 2015 to freeze it in time to basically keep it the way that it oh. is. And I, I'm positive I would not still have it to this day if I didn't do that because the forcing of the obsolescence uh, through the software, it's like a boiled frog. Every year, every couple months, never, never mind a year, 
something happens where I can't now connect to the calendar. I can't mm-hmm. do this. So, and I, I already realized that freezing it in time, I, I basically can't put on any new Adobe software. So whatever I have is what I have. And that's all I need to use for yeah, graphic yeah. design specifically. I can understand the other side too. It's a security risk. You, you do need to update for these security risks and things like that. So if I were, you know, doing banking, things like that, I would be certainly much more cautious. But the one that I keep from 2012 is purely for graphic design in yeah. just a small capacity. Just recently, I had a, um, a, a prompt to say, you have to change your iCloud password. You have to. There's no skipping. There's no mm-hmm. remind me later. And I went, you know what? I'm pretty good on my passwords. I try to to keep them all different and complicated and switch them up whenever I can. So if I get a prompt to change it, I, I usually do it. So I did because I had to, first of all, but yep. I did it. And then immediately everything shut down on my calendar, iCloud, the messages. Oh my God, messages. Did you freak out? Well, I just went, oh, this is, makes sense. This is like if you're a Seinfeld fan, yeah. that episode where George is trying to <laughs> not get fired and he just keeps coming yeah. into the office. He's like, whatever Hides you're going to throw at yeah, yeah, crawls through the vents. <laughs> I'm like, I'm in my the, office. The coffee on the table. <laughs> so I basically, <laughs> it, it needed two-factor authentication, which I also understand for security. I I'm not saying security, it, security is so important. So I'm, I'm not dismissing that. But two-factor authentication comes through your other Apple device, mm. which is my phone. So when I got the number, I went, oh, two-factor authentication. Let me just pop it into the non-existent window because two-factor authentication didn't exist in the software in 2015. Yeah. So I had no place to put oh, the code. Oh my goodness. So when I phoned Apple, their response immediately was like, oh, well, you're using a two that you're using Mavericks. Yeah. You should Maverick. be, you should be, uh, that's the, the yeah. OS at the time in 2015, you should be upgrading. And I go, listen, respectfully, you know, as well as I do that the minute I upgrade this 2012 hardware, the hardware that existed in 2012 is nowhere near what exists now to put the software in. Now I might as well throw it in the landfill right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they're like, Oh no, not at all. Like just lying yeah, basically. Yeah. And I'm like, guys, come on. So eventually I will say they were very nice. The, the service person, <laughs> they tried to walk me through it for like 45 minutes. And then finally when she couldn't do it and she's like, yeah, this is kind of a bummer. Like there's no place to put it. You don't want to upgrade it. You shouldn't have to upgrade it. Like she was a little yeah. bit on my side. She bumped me up to a manager and the manager immediately hung up on me when I said, this wouldn't have happened if you didn't force the obsolescence of this software <laughs> through. And she just go, there's no tolerance for She's saying like, forced uh, obsolescence. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Code red. It's hey, exactly. a little conspiracy like, Brad. I, maybe it was an accidental disconnect on the I phone. I doubt it. I think, I think there's another piece to this though. It, it's same thing with our cars, computers or whatever. We really should know more about them. So we can actually be able to identify if we're kind of getting put in a position where you could say something like that. I wouldn't have been, I'd be like, oh, okay, right. I'm going to follow you say I need to do this. Okay, mm. no problem, right? It's kind of like the idea with a mechanic, you know, right. like I go, I just want my car to turn on and drive, right, right. right? But then a mechanic will be like, well, and could really do different things and I'm paying out of pocket not knowing what I actually had done and that whether or not it was necessary in order to do that and just Mm -hmm. because I need it to drive Mm -hmm. yeah because you you're you're I would say Christine is more the average consumer overall when it comes to buying Mm -hmm. technology anyways yes so if she was told oh that'll work you have to update it you'd go ahead and update it all of a sudden things don't work like I it happens so often with everything in the modern world. I, can you not name? Uh, what about your TV? Oh, oh yeah. TV, S- Netflix, all that jazz. Like there's there's definitely something there. It's the speed in which the perceived obsolescence kicks in because yes, things need to be upgraded and uh, updated. Security, again, like I, I can't stress that part enough. And there's certain people who are very susceptible to those type of hacks. And right. if you're not kind of on top of it, I get it. And and you really, the safety there to, to be upgrading all the time is important. But when it's like six months, I think they say 18 months is like a long stretch for you to have a piece of multi-thousand dollar mm-hmm. equipment, right? Like my last iPhone that I bought was $2,000 and I cursed it for like six months. I go, what the fuck is this costing? <laughs> Two thousand dollars. I was just about to hold up my phone and be like, "These things, yeah. like you start doing all the updates, the battery's dying right. frequently, and you're like, wait, why? W- what's going on? Like, 
And I've closed all my apps. I've done all this stuff. Right. And batteries have a cycle too, right? So that's the other thing. And, and part of the reason I kind of wanted to delay this, uh, doing this episode, because I wanted to finish this, uh, this book by Siddharth Kara, who uh, really dives into cobalt and cobalt mining and how it is in every single electronic device battery that we have. And it is mined in the Democratic Republic of the Congo by children and mothers, essentially, right? Teenagers, children, mothers. And he, he makes no, pulls no punches to be like, they are lying to you if they say it's any other way. I was there. They don't let you take pictures. He had to do kind of the secret mission to get so in there. So sad. And like risked his life to, to pull this footage out. And it's basically, they call them artisanal miners, which is not like the fucking guy who makes your sandwich at Subway. It means it's a person who has a family who is making dollars a day just to support the family through mining cobalt, which is dangerous. And they mm -hmm. typically have like bare feet, flip flops or whatever. And Apple is one of them. Tesla is a big one where they say, we do not support artisanal mining. We are removed from that. We, we're trying to do a closed circuit thing where we are recycling as much as we can. And I, I do believe that. And I, I know Apple has um, this Daisy uh, robot that it, it disassembles phones that you recycle, that you mm. trade in or whatever. And it will do 200 phones an hour and it strips out all these precious metals and everything and tries to recycle them, tries to close that gap, but they're, they're not there yet. But they are blatantly lying to say, we do not do artisanal mining in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And it is really the only place in the world where cobalt can be mined mm -hmm. and cobalt is necessary in every single one of these batteries. So it's, it's a scary. Lack of, it's, it's a lack it's, of information. Right? And it swings me to like so yeah. many other topics because we, we talk about, you know, all these, these rights in, especially in the Western world about, you know, your, our rights, all these rights, they're so topical. And it's like, there's people, oh my God, I just spit, sorry. Yeah. Guy. <laughs> there's people really like still being treated I, very, 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 um, contrastingly different than people well, lack of in human the Western rights world. Like, like that is just slavery yeah. just yeah. flat Li out yeah. Li like I, I yeah that's literally what it is and people will buy a phone and have no problem with it but they'll be you know recently in Toronto they'll be like oh we're gonna take down this monument because it it represents and it's like um these things are still happening mm. in the world I think that there it's very short-sighted but you know it's even crazy. even when you think about People who have phones, everybody has a phone. Yeah. But how many people really know the larger story as to how none mm -hmm. all all of it comes together? Yeah. No one, a right? Small percentage. And, but I think it's intentional, right? We oh, we want to sure. mask it. We want to. It's just like when wars are going on in other parts of the world, we do not hear the full scope of like the impact of what's really going on mm -hmm. because. It's not good for business. And that to me is very, that's concerning. And that's where, you know, the more we can educate and the more we can understand, you know, these deeper conversations, the better it is. Even if we have this conversation on this podcast and it causes five people to go and go, oh, let me look into that. That's a win mm -hmm. because it allows the conversation to start happening. Yeah, I think it's, in, it's hugely important. Sorry, go ahead, Brett. I just, I saw Siddharth Kara on another podcast and he said he had this book, Cobalt Red. Mm -hmm. And immediately I was like, it, the cognitive dissonance of the fact that we all use phones and batteries need exactly what he's describing yeah. and he investigated, which he did risk his life for. I was like, I, I do have to get this book. And it really went into the history of the Democratic Republic of the Congo being exploited through history, right? Yeah. There was rubber trees and in the late 1800s, the um, King Leopold II mm -hmm. from Belgium, he basically enslaved everyone back then to um, harvest the rubber trees and for rubber tires and everything when they were taking off. So it has such a history and it's like, we are not learning from the history, yeah. whether it be rubber tires, whether it be cobalt for batteries and whatever. It's just, it's so, it's so eye opening, And it's like, yeah, how can you not have a phone? You, you can't nowadays be a business person, in my opinion, mm -hmm. put your foot down and say, I'm not going to have a smartphone. People will just I, walk I'm, over you. I'm still on that. You spent two grand on your phone. That's how much they are now. Okay. That's how but much they are now. Two grand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Oh, oh. Um, in, in the midst of, of you doing that, Brett. Um, Two grand? <laughs> I'm like, I, mean, I, I thought it was like 800. 
No, they're over, unless you're going like refurbished, refurbished, you can spend about 800. Yeah, it's crazy. The price of all of these things is also but, crazy. Yeah. Oh. It's, yeah. It's, uh, so it kind of, today's topic also makes me think, and I'm sure you'll both agree, the importance of having this conversation. Obviously, there's a lot to learn. I, I'm oh, curious yeah, I feel like more. I learned more. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm curious about that book and that yeah. guy and, and other people out there that are trying to discover and just make people aware so that you can have a little more maybe respect for your things, mm -hmm. keep them longer, treat things better, stop treating things like they're just kind of disposable. I yeah. think those are important things to grasp. But the other key thing to consider is trying to, I know it's hard when it comes to tech and things like that, mm -hmm. but trying to shop locally for things like, let's say your household furniture, uh, try to use, you know, local people that build furniture. I um, love garage sales. Yeah. Or I like, yeah, I love garage sales. I love finding a deal. I love the fact that things are getting repurposed. It's like, I would, not, yeah, that's you know, what I was like, just about to say. Repurposing uh, is the amazing. price master. Oh, yes. well, yes. And I have to find the price master out there somewhere. <laughs> He's there. It's probably going to be you dressed up and running your own little thing over here in the corner. Listen, if I move into a house and I accumulate so much rubble that I need to, uh, or rubbish that I need to sell it, I will dress up like the price master when there I do that. Yes. And I would like to say your garbage could be someone else's treasure. For sure. Yeah. I'm a garage sale person I too. I love Yard them. Sale. I think they're so fun. And it's the season's coming up right now. Mm -hmm. I think You got to get out there early though, man. Yes. people. Yes. Repurposing pickings. is great. Yes. Or even when it comes to tech with our children as an example is it's great to buy kids who are learning how to treat things like devices computers so on used um, devices so that we are minimizing the amount of new things being produced and coming out right mm -hmm. i think that that's kind of a mm -hmm. an important thing but anyways i i don't know that anyone has the proper answer or solution to these types of things it certainly sucks I want to know what kind of videos you were able to pull on the topic of forced obsolescence. The bottom line before I get to those Someone's is gonna this something. is Doomer. I, I, I'm Someone's on you. throwing something. I'm oh, on Doomer's board with, your, with the Doomer here, Christina, okay. because oh, yes, God. it is good to, to be using recycled electronics, but the reason Apple in the first place did phone trade-ins is because these phones were so crazy expensive. Now, to go back to why I spend so much, I'm because I do keep them for a long time. I'm trying to keep my phone for five years if I can. Mm -hmm. So I do buy one of the the top ones, thinking hopefully it's not gonna yeah. outdate itself okay. um, too soon or whatever. So I remember the first one being five hundred bucks, and I was like, wow, that's more than the BlackBerry I had before. Then when it was a thousand, I'm like, this is absolutely ridiculous. Like I put my foot down at a thousand. Yeah, and two. The next one, I've only had three. The next one didn't go fifteen hundred. It was two thousand. That is nuts. It literally to me. doubled, but it it was the higher, the high, the max or whatever it is. The Mac Daddy. So the reason Apple even did the trade in to lower your costs and to do this recycle plan that they they claim is to enter the market of refurbished uh, phones uh. in general because they knew they were going to jack the price up. And first of all, I I don't know the spreadsheet of how much it costs per you know microchip or whatever it doesn't cost two thousand dollars per yeah. thing right so there is a large margin there so they're trying to reduce the your interpretation of that crazy uptick in price by saying well trade in your phone will give you four hundred dollars we can also repurpose that phone too i think they and the thing i saw they do a lot in um, india yeah. and places like that where people really need the phones if they're not too badly damaged but it really was all a perception thing. It really wasn't to save the planet, recycle these things. That's That wasn't really, it's all the bottom line. And that's really what this book got into. It's like, it was pretty harsh to be like, these are slaves. They mm -hmm. These companies are bad. They are mm -hmm. doing bad things. And that's just the way it is. And it, it does get me fired up because you do need the stuff. Like it, it well, is it's a manipulation. Like, honestly, when you really, when this conversation is really important because People don't know they're being manipulated, but you are being manipulated into buying this tool or whatever it may be because you really think you need it, mm -hmm. right? And then they play off of that and they break it and then you go back to it. Well, you like Brett said, in business today, I mean, especially look at your new line of work, Christina, doing a lot of this yeah. corporate coaching or business coaching, small business, large business. 
you're connecting with people all over the world. You Online. need your technology. And so if 100%. it fails you, you're going to find a way to get something new Agreed. or what, what have you. But the, the amount of production is more, I think, a way to, to limit, like, it's all about the supply and demand chain, the, mm-hmm. that chain of events. So mm-hmm. if, if we said, okay, mm-hmm. like there's a percentage of, of youth that shouldn't be having new devices and we are repurposing. Yeah, these companies are going to make money. Everybody in the world is out there to make money. That's how we survive. Mm-hmm. It's, but even even what Brett just said, this is the part that they're even trying to get into the oh. refurbishing mm-hmm. market, right? Oh, they're like, course. oh, there's money there? Okay, mm-hmm. let's go oh, here. Because they, right? f- they flooded the market themselves in general so, so they couldn't charge that price anymore mm. because they flooded the market so how are we going to do a 100 mm. percent increase in price when everybody already has one right. let's do this refurbished it's crazy right big business is is out there and it's hard to hard mm. to imagine it ever going anywhere so you know i these types of topics are tough for a personality like me because i'm a results person yeah. and this kind of stuff sort of drives me a little bit wild because mm-hmm. like, like hey well what's the solution i don't want people being treated poorly unfairly it's it's terrible how can we do better and then you you know you say they're basically double dipping these companies yeah. are double mm-hmm. dipping making these types of money but um, even small little little steps to reduce the amount of things we consume can help, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, know. for sure. We don't always need every yeah. single thing. Right? Oh yeah, and we we've become a disposable dis- uh, disposable society where right everything oh it's broken don't worry we'll get another one no yeah okay no big deal instead of repurposing fixing seeing how we can get things back in order instead of right. adding on right? right but that's that's a mindset thing mm-hmm. that we've been brought up that way it's hard too though cuz quality has diminished and i'm sure yeah. most viewers would also agree that that's a big part of it right just the quality of things in general mm-hmm. but anyways we could talk about it for days i am going to be honest with you guys i was like i really wonder what the heck <laughs> i think someone's going to break something these are okay. all, and these are actually pretty, pretty serious in general, these oh, ones, but okay. there is a great outside of that book by Siddharth Kara, which I really recommend, uh, Cobalt Red. There is a 10 minute Ted talk by Gay Gordon Byrne, Byrne, mm-hmm. B-Y-R-N-E, who is uh, a proponent of the right to repair. And she's forwarded some bills in the U S to say, Hey, we should be able to repair these things. We don't need proprietary mm-hmm. screws okay. where we don't have access. Just you regular screw so I can pop the thing out and put a new one in. I don't need to replace everything. Yeah. It, right. Yeah. And that's, that's a good one. That's the way it used to be. And the way mom and pop shops used to, to repair vacuums and things like that, that was their business. They were able to get the parts from the manufacturer. You didn't have to buy a whole new vacuum. You could go in, test your vacuum tubes and all that kind of stuff, repair it for, you know, a couple dollars versus buying a new one for back then, probably 100, 150 yeah. bucks, whatever it is. So I'll just have a, a small clip from hers, which I thought was a good point What's from her TED talk. really rather. got me irritated <laughs> is that at this point, the vast majority of products on the market today cannot be repaired by any mm-hmm. party without being totally dependent on the manufacturer. Mm. And the day the manufacturer decides they don't want you to fix it, it's over. This is a completely artificial problem. Mm -hmm. Manufacturers used to provide comprehensive documentation and schematics and ship them with every product. It was expected that you could fix your stuff. I remember seeing that all the time and being like, wow, this this is a lot of information, which is good. Manufacturers stopped printing, which made sense because printing was expensive. And then, then somewhere along the line, somebody said, ah, we need to know who's using our website. So they demanded a login. And then another bright light said, oh, we can charge. So they put up a paywall. And then a third bright light said, we can't let anybody Mm. have this information at all. They might compete with us. And that's where we are today. They might compete with us. We can't get what we need to fix our stuff. And it's scarcity model again, right? It's like, we're the only ones who can fix it when that's not a reality of it. If you set it up properly, people can... They're, they're very competent if you mm-hmm. give them the right instructions and tools. Mm-hmm. At that point, it's just waste. It's just creating landfill. Yeah. And it's, that's Selfishly, the part that's crazy. Selfishly, though, for money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to play, this is, all of my videos are basically recommendations oh, <laughs> for okay. people to go out. Good. And actually, I really hope in this one, we get some feedback from people, because I know my 
perspective is Apple. And a lot of my friends who are very tech savvy, computer savvy are not Apple at all. And they're like, look, this is the, this is the Google world. This is the Android yeah. world and all that. And I just don't have experience. I had PC before, um, Mac. And then once I started to really start my business and everything, I, I switched over to Mac. So that's my perspective. I'd love to hear from people who know a different side of things too, because maybe those companies all the are same. doing it different. Did it's you ever, ever hear anything though that it is the same? Well, I, I use PC for my work just because it costs. I mean, mm -hmm. when I'm yeah. doing what I'm doing, it's more cost effective to buy a, a PC than it is to buy a Mac. Mm -hmm. And I kind of need like the bigger, I need a computer that goes around. I need the bigger keypad because of yeah. I'm doing the books and stuff like that. And so that's what brought me to it. But again, like this is my third one in the last mm -hmm. few years because the same thing happens. You update them, you update them, the memory goes, you need new ones, you call the companies, you go to get your... That's making me nervous about my computer. people okay. to help you and that's it. You, right. They're like, oh, you need a new one. And it's like, that's just a normal thing. I remember the girl, sorry, I don't want to go off on a tangent because I know mm -hmm. we're nearing the end here, but... She literally looked at me and was like, oh, you need a new one. It's only $600. And I'm like, bitch, $600? Like, yeah. mm -hmm. what do you mean only $600? Like, this is crazy to me that this is how we talk about money. It's dispensable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My buddy Tim had a good point when I switched to Mac. He's like, uh, what other store do you th can you think of that only has a symbol? And you just are, you walk yeah. into the store with the symbol, you spend $7,000 in yeah. the symbol store and you leave. And it's, uh, it's pretty cryptic when you really think about it. I went, I never really thought it's about it. It's brilliant that. marketing. It is, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sleek products. People like it. So this again is a recommendation. We're not going to watch this, but I just want to bring your attention to a YouTube channel by Lewis Rossman. And he's been doing this for like, this video is seven years old. So he's been doing it a lot longer. And he goes into fixing how to fix Today Mac to products that, really products really that only really he can do, or you have to have all this, this specialty uh, the equipment controller. that he has, but it just shows you, this is the kind of shit you have to have to fix this kind of stuff. And he does a lot of like the, the like, here's how I fix this thing for $3. I soldered a $3 part wow. into this thing. So look, he even has a microscope. Oh, he's got, yeah, yeah he's got everything. And this is seven years old. So he obviously he repairs all this kind of stuff, but he is a huge proponent of, uh, uh, this anti forced obsolescence, planned obsolescence stuff. He's like, we, the right to repair. That's essentially no what it is. And then it goes the into the whole sustainability no thing, yeah. right? Yeah. For the environment. Right. So anyway, we're not going to. Yeah, it's, it's huge. Like, jobs, this conversation right? is really powerful because it makes you realize how every single one of us is impacting the greater number of mm -hmm. disposable things that are going out there. So when we talk about sustainability, everyone likes to go, oh, yeah, that's not my problem. That's that country or over here or whatnot. But it's all of us. But that's my joke with the straws. I know I keep going back I know to the straws. It. Yes, I but, understand. But the, the whole paper, thing is, is paper straws. No, but the <laughs> whole thing is, is is that really the issue or how about the fact it's not. that right so yeah. this is where i make that joke and i'm being and you're funny. a bit of a jerk <laughs> being no, you're funny i'm not trying to be yeah. funny i'm being an <laughs> asshole but it's it's true because yeah. it's not the, the straws are not the problem yeah. this this stuff is part of the problem but and hugely well, and I would say this is the game that they play, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They, as in society, it's like, oh, okay, let's, the, the, sustainability is an issue. Let's tell them about the straws. Yeah, exactly. Go, this go. Is, oh, yeah. yeah, you got the straws. Meanwhile, we're throwing tons of I, stuff. It, well, that's kind right? of my joke yeah. with it totally yeah. is yeah. that, but, um, We'll yeah, stop. We'll fixing. stop. Right. Sorry. Let's see, it's a Sorry. hot topic. We're just like chatting. No, this is go. a good one. Okay. I knew this one would be uh, would be intense. Yeah, it's uh, good. So to lighten it up, <laughs> oh. I think the only uh, the only dude in the world who's okay with the Phoebus uh, cartel is the dude who needs to change the light bulb on the top of this tower. Oh my god! Every six months. Oh my god! Every six months, this man in South Dakota climbs this communication tower to change the light bulb. He is paid. Twenty thousand dollars per climb. Holy! Not crap. bad, right? I, mean, I don't know. I don't like man. heights, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm kind of want to apply. <laughs> Twenty grand, like that's forty thousand dollars a year. A just bird could come. I can, you could get knocked up. It's deep. Well, he's in the middle. That makes it better. Right? Yeah, it does. He's got protection. Have you seen the Netflix movie? Yes, I have. Yeah, <laughs> I can't even remember the name. It's called Bird, or it's called Nest, or something like Fear, one, like they, one word. The, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
No, what is you it called? You guys are hilarious. Like, you were it, just yeah. having a moment. I know. Shit, what is it? Very it's, cool. like, it's buggy me that I can't think of it. Free fall, fall, fall. That's, look fall. At the, guys, look at where he is. Like that's incredible. Anyways, yeah, South Dakota. watch the movie Fall, and then you'll understand that birds and vultures can come get take you. you down. Yeah, take you down. It's not worth the twenty grand. I also understand how movies work, and I realized oh that that God. was pretty green you screen. Think, you I think? still had. Look, at I, you're making me. Off. I know, and I'm like, I this is fake. It. In my head, I'm you like, this is wimps. a fake thing. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> her friend died. You guys are wimps. Like, oh God. Oh yeah, you're the one who's scared of heights. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Are we ready for? Oh. Intelligence. Oh, let's see. Oh, maybe I'm in the hospital yes. again. Yes. Or I'm a goblin. I'm not, I'm not going to toot my own horn, but these ones are pretty good, Christina. Okay. Oh, <laughs> wow. They are improving. I don't any, know what I'm doing there, man. You I are, look like I'm one happy camper. If you're smashing is, yeah. the laptop with your mind. With my mind. I'm blowing <laughs> my mind. I like it. So if this is your first time tuning into our podcast, Brett I recently. I actually think that would look like me. It does. Yeah, that one's really that's good. That's me. He, uh, he's My been nose. doing AI photos, so if you are only listening by audio, definitely check this one out. Scroll to the end and check out the AI I like it. photos. That's like a good that job. One. Good work. All right. Good work, AI. I'm always scared of my forehead. Okay. Yours? I am in I, real it's life. the eyebrow. So. The eyebrow that does it. This one, I didn't even really need AI. I think I have a picture of you in real life doing this. <laughs> wow, I like my outfit. I want to find that. It's a pretty good one, right? The hands are still a bit weird. <laughs> I got nails on wow, one. Wow, you're raging. I like like, at least mine one's blown. Yours, like, you're oh, ready. I, like I would not want to be stuck in an aisle. Listen, with she's you. in the drive thru at McDonald's yeah, at this yeah, point. Yeah, man, she means business. She's huh? a mean mama here. That is, yeah. I want that dress. Yeah, okay. okay. Thanks. All right, for me, I just wanted cartoon? Uh, to me to, no, I didn't do a cartoon because the hilarity wouldn't be there if I okay. did a cartoon because okay. I put in eating an apple nefariously. And it made me like a little oh my God, weird like a little bearded boy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> am I looking at? <laughs> you, that does I don't look know. a little disturbing. It is, I'm not even, oh I'm my like, God. It's very unsettling. I'm, very confused. I think when I put the word nefarious in, it I think was you're like, from the north. That's what I think. Yeah, it's just like it's tucked away in put, a barn. Put that cart yeah. away. <laughs> That's uncomfortable. I'm I, the monitor I, of the carts at this point. <laughs> oh I my god! Yeah, he's the uh, shopping yeah, cart look at monitor. Him watching. He's watching all the video there. Oh, there's that girl again. Good Send job. her out. Good job, Send her out. Oh man, I love those AI wow. photos. Huh. That well, is everything. Look at that. Well, I think today's episode, we... I really loved it. You you and I My were blood a little pressure. skeptical. Yeah. We were skeptical. Not I didn't know where was, I was going with it, but yeah. I'm like, I got lots to say here. I like it. Yeah. Me well, too. it can take you a lot of directions for mm -hmm. sure. So... Um, we'll link all the stuff that... I was, uh, was going to say that. And I am going to read that book. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't even trying to be crazy that time. <laughs> Yeah. He's like, we'll link all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, I was going to say that. I was going to yeah. do that. And let's be yeah, honest. Circle back. The, uh, the book is available on all your devices mm. through uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Audible. <laughs> the Just audio be mindful. Version. Don't discard your devices. So, Repurpose them. Repurposing. Yes. Be better. Be better about those things. Hopefully it provided some awareness. I think it did. Yeah. Well, thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Anyone who has tuned in and would like to learn more about Christina, Brett, or myself and this podcast, take a look at our website at www.modernmatterspodcast.com. You can also find all the links for our previous episodes, which we did reference a lot today, mm -hmm. as well as Brett mentioned, all of his recommendations will be in uh, the links below the videos and in all of our... Um, post areas so i think i think that covers today oh thanks awesome. guys awesome thank you yeah that was yeah uh, i like it I good job right good topic i feel Brett. like i am i'm more informed we could get After you going. Our conversation yeah only a couple swears not yeah. too many That's swears okay. i'm That's interested okay. in that I'm book even, yeah me too it's good 